Hey everyone, welcome back and thanks for watching. This is Eric KJ for YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. If you're new to the hobby or new to the series, assuming you've already clicked on the subscribe button, go back and watch my first video in this mini series about learning 10 meters and follow along and you'll learn one HF band at a time in a simple form without blowing your mind, but get you to be a better operator and see what you'd expect from each band. Now in this video, we're coming to the end of this mini series, but there's a lot more than this, so stay tuned. And we're talking about the 80 meter band. This is something you need to watch from the beginning to the end if you're a newcomer to the hobby or you've never watched 80 meters. There's a, quite a bit of information in this video. I want you to follow it every minute so that you can get the most of what I'm trying to say in the quickest way. And then in the future, you could always research and find more information. But this band can be challenging. This band can or cannot be friendly. And this band may or may not be for you. So let's get into the 80 meter band and we'll see all about it. Let's take a look at 80 meters on the U.S. Amateur Radio Band chart from the ARRL. 80 meters is the widest band of all of them. Look at 17 meters, 18.068 to 18.168, the entire one end of the band to the other. But look at 80 meters from 3.5 to 4 megahertz. That's a wide, wide band. A lot of stuff going on here, so stay tuned. Now, general, advanced, and extra class all, of course, have different operating privileges. but in 80 meters, that can mean a lot between general and extra. We'll go into that. Look here. If you're a novice or a technician and you're thinking of upgrading soon, but you're enjoying brushing up on your CW skills, you have a lot of CW you can work down here in the bottom, bottom end of the band, a lot of CW. Now, to tell you how 80 meters works, it's a nighttime winter band. So in the daytime may be used locally if you have a good day you might be able to use it you know uh, uh, locally a couple hundred miles maybe but 80 meters opens at night and in the summer versus the winter the summer could be absolutely treacherous when you're trying to find a clear frequency the noise can be so high in the summer uh, even in the nighttime you could have static crashes from lightning five states away in the atmosphere that's really killing your signal it's a rough band it really is some of the people that are on 80 uh, well first of all 80 is probably the last band you'll ever want to be on for QRP and probably one of the hardest bands for mobile so 80 meters is uh, definitely a tough band but there's plenty of people that work it all right in the winter time at night overnight hours is definitely your best bet now looking at this here there's something you don't see on the chart that you may have heard people refer to and that's 75 meters they say well let's get on 75 meters and you think where the hell is that on this chart 75 meters is to, to make it easy is what some people refer to as the upper portion where phone is and they call 80 meters the lower portion where CW and data is now I'm not too solid on the history of 75 meters uh, or the 80 meter band i mean i i don't operate there that much if i do anything at all on 80 it's psk and ridi on 80 in the lower portion and i'll explain why in a minute keep keep staying tuned here uh, but 75 meters the antenna is roughly uh, a little bit shorter than it would be on 80 meters so we'll get in to see the length of this kind of antenna a lot of antennas do cover 80 meters but the problem with that is, like my high gain AV680, now I can do 75 or 80 depending on where I tap the coil on top and trim the elements. But the problem is this, if I want to put it in the data portion, no way will it work in the phone portion without a 10 to 1 SWR. I have to retune that antenna. So I may keep the antenna where it is in the lower portion for data and CW, because that's all I'm interested in on this band. But I, without a tuner and a lot of loss on that antenna, remember, your tuner is not making your antenna resonant. It's just making your radio happy. But to use an antenna with 10 to 1 SWR and then tuning it is really not the best because you've got to battle all that noise. So it's really tough. A lot of people on 80 are using amplifiers. A lot of people on 80 are using long antennas. Uh, so 80 will, if you're a newcomer to the hobby, I recommend not going to the 80 meter band as your very first band. Let's get into some more here. Looking at bandplans.com, and I failed to mention in the last uh, section, lower sideband 
on 80 meters for uh, phone and CW. Upper side on digital mostly, but lower sideband when you're talking on 80 meters. Bandplans.com shows a 75 meter suggested frequency list and an 80. We'll look at 75 first. And again, they show from 3.6 to 4 megahertz. All the, mostly all the phone portion is up here. And there's a lot and a lot of nets. You will find nets all over the place. This is your workhorse band for nets, all right? AM, uh, AM's fun on 75 meters. Uh, AM nets, they have sideband nets, they have CW nets, they have digital nets. But look at this, there's a little people network, uh, you know, um, per, Premier Caribbean, MCOM, and Welfare Net daily. You know, the old timers nets, over the hill net, uh, the, the old goats net. The, you know, a lot of people, when you go to HamFest, what you'll notice is a lot of these clubs and organizations, they set up banners on their tables and they say, join us on 3.927 on the old goats net, you know, uh, and, and they, they promote that. There's a lot of people that enjoy these nets. There's a lot of people that that's all they do is nets and they're usually every day. Um, and believe me, I, I'm not sure how many of these are still in service or how many of these are true. I don't participate in these 75 meter nets. But also, on top of the nets, there's round tables that are unofficial, just guys that have been doing this for 10 years, and they stay on the same frequencies every night. The same guys are there, and they've been doing it for many years. And I'm going to warn you right now, as a newcomer to the hobby or a seasoned professional, you're going to find round tables and groups of people that are not friendly, they swear, and they don't ID. You will find that. Just move along. There are other round tables and group gatherings that people are very welcoming. So you're going to find it. You're going to see it. This is the band that some people have stapled as, you know, 11 meters. They call it the CB band because not a lot of people have practiced good, you know, uh, etiquette down here, but that doesn't speak for everybody. Believe me. I just don't want you to be, you know, scared when you jump into it, please. There's a great band here with some stations in there that don't belong, but We'll go up here to the 80 meter section, I should say down here, which is the lower portion where CW and digital happens. And there's CW and nets down here. There's also digital nets. There's a lot of digital suggested frequencies. I've done Olivia plenty of times on here. I've done uh, Hell Schreiber, which is a video I keep saying is coming on. FT8 that you see on here right around JT65. And, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of stuff. And automatic stations, you want to make sure, again, you stay away from the automatic link uh, networks because they may sound quiet when you're there and then they have a station come on uh, and uh, over you know wipe out your signal so 80 and 75 what a, a a plethora of stuff going on here looking at the dx maps website here on 80 meters so the gray line here again nighttime in europe daytime in the u.s look at the difference you see with it being a nighttime band a lot of stations reporting contacts over here but very few over here during the day because of the atmospheric layer, the noise, and just the way the band propagates because of the atmospheric layers. So later on, I'll show you again, and we'll see what happens in the evening hours here with 80 meters. And if I look at the PSK Reporter site, which is on my uh, video on my site as well, on my channel, here is the last 15 minutes, all modes on 80 meters reported for digital modes in the last 15 minutes. And you can see only a couple over here on uh, 80 meters, but look at Europe over here in Asia and, and all these. And then looking at it hours later at 7.52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, local to my time. Now that the darkness has fallen upon us, and you can see now there's some DX stations here, but uh, it's slowed down a lot in Europe with the reported spots and picked up in the US. So definitely better at night. So how long would a dipole be for the 80 meter band? And it depends, again, on where you're wanting to operate. Now myself, I only operate digital on there at all and may get into some CW. So I'm going to look at the lower frequency. We'll call it uh, 3.550, uh, roughly. Get right there in the uh, middle of the digital portion. And it looks like 131.8 feet. Now, that's that's quite long. 
you know, and, and what you'll see is you'll see some dipoles out there that are compromised. They say they work 80 through 10 and they have coils on them or taps or whatever. Like my antenna, my, my vertical is a compromised antenna. There's no way I could have uh, a 65 foot full, uh, quarter wave full standing vertical. Uh, I, I could, but I mean, it'd be a little long. My vertical is about 31 feet, 32 feet, but it's got a tap and some, some elements on top for 80. So with that being said, now look at this. If you're, if you're mobile, okay, with all the noise we talked about and all the conditions that happen, let's say, you know, for a quarter wave mobile antenna, you need 65 feet. Now, of course, that's impossible, but almost, well, every antenna for 80 and 75 is compromised. So it's using electrically 65 feet of antenna coiled down into a reasonable length. That's how, that's how that works. And that'll be a video on mobile antennas soon. So, you know, you can make your radio happy with a 65 foot electrically long 80 meter antenna for mobile but it's still only about five or six feet high you know and uh that that doesn't make it too efficient on 80 meters can be worked absolutely you can do 80 mobile no problem with it and i do uh, 80 digital on my high gain but 131 feet now watch this let's say i want to talk on 75 meters i want to go to the upper end 3.940, okay? Now watch the antenna length, 118. That's a big difference. Uh, that's a big difference in wires. So you, you have to determine, you know, if you went in the center of the band, 3.7, I don't know, 50. Yeah, that's about right. So 124 feet. Now you're going to need a tuner to take that antenna from, CW portion to the upper end of 75 meters and it's only going to be happy here around this length by the time you get lower in the digital portion it's going to be something like you know four or five to one SWR then you have to have a tuner and if you tune five to one SWR that will work but if you're wanting to get every dollar out of that a dollar of watts out of that antenna you're going to want to make sure that your antenna is resonant where you want it okay so for me uh, my 80 meter off center fed dipole I made back a few years ago was right for 3.550 and that was about, uh, I'm sorry, 3.550. That was about 131 feet um, and that covered 80 through 10 with a tuner, but on 80 meters I didn't need a tuner. That was uh, ready to go for that frequency in the lower portion of the band. So what would you expect to find as a newly licensed amateur radio operator on the 80 meter band? And I bring these videos to you with personal experience and opinions, but in no form am I a rule of thumb as to how these bands and these videos operate. You know, there may be people that tells you, well, 80 meters is the best band. You need to go there because that's where they operate. Now, I'm just trying to tell you what I've seen and what people have said on the internet. And you can find this information anywhere. But I want you to be educated as a new operator when you get to all these bands and find what you'd expect. Real, real world scenario. 80 meters has a lot of DX to offer. It has a lot of CW to offer. It has a lot of phone to offer. Uh, to offer. But I find that 80 meters is really where all the nets operate, where all the retired operators go, where they, where they hang out every night, late at night to the early hours in the morning. Now you have to remember, there are some people, you're new, and I'm, I've been doing this since 2004 on a licensed ham operator, but I'm still new, man. I'm still learning every day, and there's nothing wrong with that. But there's people out there that have been doing this for 50 years. They did it before Sideband was there, and they're done working contacts and making new countries. So it's not exciting to them anymore. They want a place where they can go at night on 80 meters on their select frequency where the same guys have been operating for the same amount of time every day or every night. And that's where they go. And that's fine. That's their place. That's what they want to do. But if you try to go into some of these rag chews or round tables with a QRP rig as a new hobby, uh, uh, newly licensed hobbyist for the amateur radio world, you may find yourself being discouraged when they say, well, you're a QRP station. You need to find yourself upwards in the band. You know, you know that will happen. Don't be discouraged. But there's other roundtables where they love hearing new people come in, and they want to invite you into their group so you can be a part of their roundtable every night. There's a lot of politics on 80. There is. There's a lot of people that want to discuss how 
they hate the president and how they hate the ARRL and whatever. I guess they could do what they want to do, but let's keep it in a legal fashion because some people want to talk like that when they swear and they don't have uh, um, a good thing to say. So it's not full of bad people. I'm just warning you, you will run into those kind of people. So that's primarily why I don't operate on 75 meters. I operate in 80 meters, which is down in the lower portion in the digital. I find myself having more fun on PSK and uh, Olivia and Hellschreiber on 80 meter digital. And if I ever really get back in the CW, that's probably where I'll hang out is the, the CW portion for DX. That's probably where I'll be hanging out. So consider your antenna uh, requirements for this band being it's a longer uh, antenna. And consider that you are going to be competing with a lot of people in a noisy band that are running full legal limit. So if you're considering going there with a 20-watt rig, think about other bands first unless you really want to bust up through that noisy band to make that contact. And I, I've done that before. I said, well, I'm not, I don't have an amplifier. I don't run amplifiers. I run 100 watts. And I wanted to be on working DX with 100 watts, and I did it. And you can do it too. So thanks for watching on this video. A little bit longer, but I wanted to touch on all the little facets of this band. And the next band coming in the final of this mini-series is not actually an HF band, but a medium frequency band. And we'll get into that shortly, and then a whole other mini-series comes up in the future. So stay tuned. Leave your comment below on what you think of this band or what you may have learned from this video, how you're doing as a new operator, and subscribe for more. 7-3 from KJ4YZI.